Hey guys, I am Alia. I have lived in Seattle for over six years now and today I wanted to share with you guys all of my favorite places to go, hang out, eat, and everything in between. We're gonna cover restaurants, bars, cafes, bakeries, shops, areas, and general activities. So let's go. Okay, we're gonna start out with food because I know that's why a lot of you are here is to figure out where do you go eat in Seattle? What's the spot to go eat at? Where does everybody go for dinner? Well, I have the answers, but first I do want to give a disclaimer that these are just places that I like to go to and places that I've been going to for the last couple years. First one on the list comes as no surprise to you guys. If you've watched my videos for a long time, you know that my favorite, favorite, favorite place to get food in Seattle has to be the Seattle Fish Guys. I have been going to them for years now and ever since I had them for the first time, I just like fell in love. They are located in the heart of the Central District. They are a restaurant and seafood market. Market. They serve the most incredible poke I've ever had in my life. Guys, Look at I gotta it. tell you, this is my favorite spot in Seattle. Do you know how many times we've been here? I haven't been counting, no. Yeah, Why? I mean, I haven't been counting either, but I definitely think it's like over 20 times, like 30 times. We come here at least twice a month. I would say once a week is like the usual. But I always, always get, if they have it, the sweet shoyu salmon and the spicy salmon. You can build your own bowl. I always get the spicy tuna. Do you get the salmon? It's also really good, but I just double up on the spicy Yoni tuna. Yoni loves the spicy tuna because it's the mayo dressing, like the mayo sauce. I mean, look at this beauty. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Now, next for food, we have Rachel's Ginger Beer, which is located in Capitol Hill, but also with a location in Pike Place and U Village. But the reason why RGB is in the food section is because their Capitol Hill and U Village locations both have a collaboration with Maono Fried Chicken. So anytime I go, I always get either the fried chicken sandwich or the chicken fingers. They are incredible. They have different spice levels that you can pick from. I we always stay with the mild because it's plenty, but try it at your own risk. The combination of the fried chicken with the fries and the Rachel's ginger beer with whatever flavors you get is so on point that it has to be at the top of the list. Now, the next restaurant that I would highly recommend to everybody to go try is Paju, located in Lower Queen Anne. They serve modern and unique takes on Korean dishes. If you come here, you have to try the squid ink fried rice or the steak bulgogi made with truffles. It's absolutely incredible. Those two are always on their menu. Most of their menu changes seasonally, but these two have been on rotation on the menu every single time I come over there. They just serve really innovative dishes with incredible, incredible flavor combinations. And this place is also great to come with a large group if you want to taste test everything because the portions are meant to be shared, family style. Now, one of my all-time favorite places to eat in Seattle has to be Pasta Casalinga in Pike Place Market. It's a little bit hard to find and you have to really look for the signs of where to go because it's deep in the market. So it's one of those places that if you know, you know. But Pasta Casalinga is a pasta bar, not a lot of seating. So you definitely have to sometimes wait a little bit, but it's so, so, so worth it. This place has been my family and I's go-to ever since we moved to Seattle, since we've discovered it, it's incredible. So we're at Pasta Casalinga right now. They have three that change. They always have one from the ocean, from the farm, and from the garden. And then they always have like the lasagna and the classic like Pomodoro pasta. But this is my go-to spot in Park Parkways, in Pike Place Market. Another one of my all-time favorite restaurants in Seattle for the past couple years has been Isarn Thai Soul Kitchen. They have uh, several locations around Seattle area but I always go to the Queen Anne location or the Ravenna location. The ambiance is always so nice and perfect for dinner with a larger group as their dishes are really the perfect size to share among people. And they have so many different dishes that I love, but some of my favorites have to be the Chinese sausage fried rice and the pad siu, as well as their Thai steak salad, which I could literally eat every single day. It's that good. Okay, now listen, I love my pastries. Like if pastries were a food group, which which to me they are, I just, I take them very seriously. And that's why I have one place to recommend you for pastries in Seattle, where to get the best pastries with the most like interesting flavors, but also the highest quality would have to be at Temple Pastries in Central District. They have come through every time. Like every time they change their menu, every time they have new items, it's just so, so good. It's flaky, it's buttery. It's like the perfect pastry. 
I swear to you, they have new changing flavors, but some OGs that are always there. Also, the interior is really lovely. If you want to hang out in there, they also have a little bit of outdoor seating. And if you're trying to get some work done, they have some upstairs seating that has plenty of seats and a lot of plugs. Now, a second pastry shop that is close second for me has to be Bake Shop in Lower Queen Anne. They also make some incredible pastries, but they also have sandwiches and more like lunch items. But everything that I've tried there has been really good super flavorful um, also their coffee is really good I'm a big bagel gal and if you are a bagel person these are my recommendations for you first we have Westman's bagels they're my absolute favorite because they were in my neighborhood but they're also some of the best that I've had in the city their sandwiches especially their BEC which is bacon egg and cheese sandwich is so so good their version of it is exactly the perfect bacon egg and cheese sandwich in my opinion I always get it on an everything bagel but they have all varieties of bagels and they have seasonal schmears and they have an extensive menu of different sandwiches if you're not a BC person second we have Mount Bagel which is also located in Capitol Hill they're a newer addition to the city but definitely worth checking out we've got our bagels mm -hmm. both scallion but this is a spicy scallion Mm. Oh, this is good. I oh, love how soft the inside is too. Mm -hmm. Next spot might be one of my most frequented places that I've been to in Seattle, especially in the last few years. And it has to be Little Oddfellows located in Capitol Hill inside of the Elliott Bay Bookstore. Which, by the way, Elliott Bay Bookstore should be a place that you check out on its own outside of the Little Oddfellows. But Little Oddfellows has been a hub for me to work out of my apartment. For some reason, I can really focus in there. It's super chill and nice. It gets really busy by noon, so you definitely have to hurry up and snatch a seat because it's really popular have really great pastries they also have a few lunch items like sandwiches or soup and more importantly their coffee is really really good there's plenty of seating and plugs to charge your computer okay now for drinks I do have a few recommendations to start off with if you are a matcha person if you like matcha which I love matcha I'm also very particular about my matcha then I would say that my favorite matcha spot it would have to be Nana's green tea downtown Seattle they by far make the best matcha I've found in the city, but they also make matcha everything. They're with one of those places. They have matcha parfaits, matcha ice cream, matcha pastries. They also have savory food like rice bowls with meat. You can easily just have a whole meal there, including a matcha dessert. Seattle has several bubble tea places that are really, really good, but I have two favorite ones in the city. Number one has to be Meraki Tea in the U District. So we just went to Meraki Tea, and this is one of my favorite like boba spots, especially when I was in college living around UW, I would always get bubble tea from Meraki. And um, my go-to is the mango passion fruit green tea. And you can also tell they have like little bits of, I think it's mango and passion fruit inside it. So you know, like that's why the flavor is so good. And second, we have Happy Lemon. I know they're international, but we do have a few locations here in Seattle and they are some of my favorites for specifically milk teas with boba. And of course, you always have to get one of their bubble waffles because they're just to die for incredible. And the pairing with the milk tea is just chef's kiss. Now, I don't really drink much, but I did want to include one drink slash bar place if you are interested. I do love wine and one of my favorite, all-time favorite wine bars in Seattle has to be Otherworld Wine Bar. They specialize in natural wines and they always have so many wines that you can either buy to take home. They also have rotating wines, either some whites or reds or oranges or rosés. It's just such a lovely space to be in because you don't feel like you have to know about wines to go there. The vibes are immaculate and the music and the space and the people that go there. I highly recommend you guys check out Otherworld Wine Bar. Okay, now for desserts. I am not a big ice cream person. I'm gonna say this, but at the same time, at the top of my list for desserts, has to be salt and straw. Their ice cream is incredible. They have new flavors every month, which is amazing and keeps people going back. I would have to say that my favorite, 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 favorite flavor that I always get, no matter what the new thing is, has to be honey lavender ice cream 
in a waffle cone or waffle bowl. Now, the second dessert place that I highly recommend you guys check out is called Bai Ten, and it's located also in Capitol Hill. They specialize in Japanese desserts, but more specifically, the fruit sandwiches and incredible soft serve. We got a little yuzu soft serve and black sesame soft serve. Oh my god, the black sesame is crazy. Now for activities, Seattleites are known to love the outdoors, which is actually why a lot of people live in Seattle and the Pacific Northwest is because there's so much greenery and water and just nature in general. So people are always looking for ways to spend more time outside. Now we're over here at Lake Union and I'm here because probably one of the most popular activities for Seattleites has to be paddle boarding. I would say I personally prefer Lake Union just because it's a little bit more adventurous, it's bigger, and you get to see the city 360 degrees because Lake Union is in the middle of Seattle so you get to see downtown, you get to see Gasworks Park, and it's also really close to a lot of different food places so you can make a whole day out of it. I have to say that one of my favorite parks in Seattle is where I'm actually located right now, which is Myrtle Edwards Park. And it's super sunny today, but even when it's gloomy, it's so beautiful. It's my favorite go-to spot for a walk or a run. This trail is the Elliott Bay Trail, and it's a super long one. So if you wanna go on a run or anything, anytime you wanna get away from the city and get to be by the water, the breeze, the smell of the ocean, it's just beautiful. And I love how it stretches all the way from Inner Bay down to the Olympic Sculpture Park. And speaking of, my second place that I highly recommend you guys check out in Seattle or just go to hang out is Olympic Sculpture Park. It's very, very unique to Seattle. It was put together by the Seattle Arts Museum and there's just a lot of like different sculptures that are in the park. The park itself isn't really big, but there's a lot of just like open space where you can hang out, you can sit down, you can have a picnic. And I love how all these parks are just connected to each other so you can easily just see all of them in one day and if you continue in the same direction you will reach the waterfront which is probably my favorite part of the activities because it's so beautiful you really get to feel like you are in Seattle and that Pacific Northwest vibe there's actually a lot of different little like restaurants and coffee shops places to eat stores that you can find along the way and in the summertime it's always super busy but still really fun especially if this is your first time in Seattle I definitely recommend walking all the way from Centennial Park into the waterfront because then you can walk all the way to Pike Place and it's a beautiful like 20 minute walk not too long you get to see a lot of the city and a lot of what the Seattle vibe has to offer and of course Pike Place Market I know it's super touristy but even if this is not your first time in Seattle I really love coming here from time to time because there's always so much going on there's so many things you can do you can spend a whole day walking through the market because there's so many little places that sometimes are a little secret and you might need to find your way to them like Pasa de Castellinga which I mentioned before but there's so many little like food spots that are kind of hole in the walls they also have so many little stores inside the place that aren't just market like but you can buy like posters or books or antiques so the market is super fun especially because it's connected to the waterfront so there's a lot of really nice views they can get from the market and in general it's just a great weekend activity but also early morning during the week if you get a chance it's really nice because it's a lot more quiet so you get to enjoy the market all to yourself and lastly for activities we have the Fremont Sunday market it's probably where you're gonna find me every Sunday because it's that good okay so we're over here at the Fremont Sunday market it's always super busy but especially in the summertime it's really busy and in the winter time usually the market is moved under the Fremont bridge so if it's like rain season winter season you can always go to the market, so let's go. My sister and I come here every time. We always get some type of food. They always have food trucks lined up. People always come, get some food, then go walk through all the little stands. And the food trucks are always like local Seattle businesses. 
And now on to vintage and thrift stores, my favorite category. I left it for last. If you already have the Fremont Sunday Market, you might as well make your way to the Fremont Vintage Mall, which is just a block away. And you can spend hours in this place. It has everything you can imagine a place to have, from homeware to clothing to accessories. I always love popping in there to like look at records or books or even clothes. You can really find some special finds in there. Next, I would say at the top of my list when it comes to vintage stores and thrift stores in general in Seattle has to be Slow Dance in Capitol Hill. They are some of my favorites because they are more of a curated vintage shop. The price point will be a little bit higher, but I think it's worth it because I know every time I walk in there, there will be several pieces that I would like and they always have various sizes and the quality is really, really good. I like that it's not just like the typical vintage cheese or denim and those types of more like thrifted finds. You can really see that they take time to curate their pieces and they have a lot more selection when it comes to like more fancy items. Next we have Red Light Vintage which is located in the U District where all the college kids go to get their vintage and thrift finds so you know it's good. They really have a lot in there, a lot of vintage tees, a lot of denim and they actually have a whole area just for costumes so people often go there for like parties, themed parties or Halloween. There's really a lot to dig through in there. Next we have Late Night Vintage Market. This place is huge and if you are someone who likes to put on their headphones and browse in a vintage shop for hours, this is a place for you. This place is really big. They host a bunch of different vendors which I love. There's literally something for everybody. There's so many different styles of clothing in the market from like sporty to super vintage and rare. There's really something for everybody and it's a great place to go with friends and hang out and walk around and browse through. Another shop is a res consignment. I actually really love this store if you want to find something a little bit more fancy and less thrift like. This is actually a consignment store so you will find a lot of really great brands that are not necessarily vintage or old but they're just you know put up to be reused and I've really found some great pieces in there. And there you have it. Those are all of my favorite places in Seattle to eat, drink, hang out, shop and everything in between. Let me know if you're gonna check out or have checked out any of the places I mentioned and also let me know if there are any spots that you're like how could she not mention this place please let me know and again this is just my opinion these are just the places that I like and I've liked for the last couple years but there's plenty of other ones that I didn't mention just because this video again can't be 20 hours long but I hope you guys enjoyed it I would really appreciate it if you guys liked this video and shared it with your friends and also subscribe if you're not subscribed a lot of exciting videos coming to you very soon. I am filming from a very special location right now. Thank you guys so much again for watching and I'll see you next time.